March is annually designated as Florida Archaeology Month with the idea to focus attention and awareness among Floridians to learn more about the archaeology and history of the state and to encourage the preservation of these important parts of Florida's rich cultural heritage. That effort is coordinated by the Florida Anthropological Society and supported by the Florida Department of State Division of Historical Resources with many additional partners. As part of a statewide celebration of the 500 year anniversary of Juan Ponce de Leon's arrival on the shores of a land he named La Florida, this year's theme for Archaeology Month was Viva Florida 500. On March 2nd, the 2013 observance of Florida Archaeology Month was celebrated in Pinellas County as Viva Tampa Bay Archaeology Day with an assortment of activities at the Wheaton Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center, which is at the forefront of the study and interpretation of local archaeology for scientists, students, and the general public. Along with the Florida Anthropological Society and Florida Division of Historical Resources, sponsors and partners for the event included the Florida Public Archaeology Network, the Central Gulf Coast Archaeological Society, the University of Florida's Sea Grant Marine Extension Program, the Friends of Wheaton Island, Viva Florida 500, Expedition Florida 500, and the Alliance for Wheaton Island Archaeological Research and Education, also known as AWARE for short. The day began with a shoreline cleanup of Riviera Bay within the Wheaton Island Preserve, coordinated by the University of Florida IFAS Sea Grant Marine Extension Agent for Pinellas County, Libby Carnahan, and Justin Riney of Expedition Florida 500 and CEO of Mother Ocean Inc. Expedition Florida 500 is a modern-day exploration of Florida's coastlines, waterways, and aquatic ecosystem, whose primary goal is to highlight the importance of stewardship efforts as they relate to the ocean, coastlines, and waterways. So today uh, we partnered with the Wheaton Island Preserve and we're celebrating Archaeology Day. Basically, the first six months of the project is the coastline. Uh, so I, I started at Pensacola on January 1st and we'll finish the coastline half um, you know, coming down all the way down the peninsula of Florida through the Keys and back up the Atlantic side. We'll finish that in Jacksonville on July 4th. So the second half of the year we're turning inland. I'm coming down the St. John's, doing a lot of the inland rivers, waterways, the Everglades, Springs. Uh, we're going to do the whole uh, Suwannee, the entire Kissimmee, and really you know, showcase the many uh, diverse ecosystems we have here in Florida. This was an opportunity with the 500th anniversary for me to um, sort of tie in, you know, the importance of these waterways and from a historical standpoint and, you know, future generations going forward. For thousands of years, the people living around Tampa Bay have relied on its waters as a source of food and transportation. Over 50 participants in the cleanup learned about Wheaton Island's unique ecosystem and also the area's prehistoric inhabitants who occupied the area for thousands of years and then paddled out to remove trash from the mangrove shoreline and stray fishing line in the trees that can entangle birds with often fatal results. Back at the Cultural and Natural History Center, local Pinellas artist and historian Elizabeth Neely with First Florida Frontiers presented her interpretation of Maria Velasquez, Conquistadora. Maria Velasquez was an actual historic figure and one of the first European women to arrive in Florida with the expedition of Spanish conquistador Panfilo de Narvaez, who landed somewhere on Pinellas County shores in 1528. A marker near the jungle Prada shoreline of Boca Ciega Bay off Park Street indicates the traditional location of the expedition's landing. As Maria, Miss Neely told visitors about her adventures aboard a Spanish ship and along with the clothing a Spanish woman might wear, she also brought along replica artifacts a woman of that time might carry with her. Here, Maria Velasquez shows visitors the platform shoes that women of those times would wear to keep the hems of their long dresses from dragging in the muddy streets. Afterwards, visitors were invited to tour the new on-site station for the Alliance for Wheaton Island Archaeological Research and Education and get an update on current and future projects that they are undertaking. This group of scientists and students, both local and national, is dedicated to the exploration and research that can illuminate the impact of environment on human life. Through ongoing archaeological excavations, more and more information about the first Wheaton Islanders is revealed. 
Wheaton Island's Hallmark Pottery, among the most exquisite in the southeastern United States, is under continuous study as the meaning and possible messages in the imprinted patterns remain a mystery. Also included in the day's program of activities was the opportunity for visitors to see the 1,100-year-old Native American dugout canoe that was excavated from the shoreline of Wheaton Island Preserve in 2011. The 40-foot canoe had to be cut into four sections to fit in a holding tank filled with a preservative solution that will allow the canoe to be reassembled and placed on display for public viewing at a future date. Visitors even got to hold small pieces of the original canoe and pose for pictures. Ongoing activities throughout the day included display tables set up by organizations like the Florida Public Archaeology Network to give information to visitors about how they can get involved with archaeology and also a display with examples of actual Native American pottery sherds of various styles. Notice the intricate design some ancient artisans etched into the clay. The Central Gulf Coast Archaeological Society displayed recreations representative of ceremonial and everyday items used by Native Americans. The DeSoto National Memorial National Park in Bradenton was represented with a display that, in keeping with the theme of this year's event, afforded visitors the opportunity to imagine themselves as part of an expedition of Spanish explorers in Florida. Visitors also got to try their hand at the Atlatl, a prehistoric tool that uses leverage to achieve greater velocity in throwing light spears or darts. A traditional Atlatl is a long-range weapon and would allow a spear thrower to achieve projectile speeds of over 90 miles per hour. Other hands-on activities back at the lab included pottery and effigy making. Also the Native American art of cordage, the ancient technology where two or more strips of fibers are twisted or plied together to make ropes, mats, baskets, shoes, and many other items. Now, Florida Archaeology Month in March is not the only time of year you can participate in archaeology at the Wheaton Island Preserve Cultural and Natural History Center. There are frequent lectures and related activities available to the public and even a summer archaeology camp for kids. And of course, the Connecting People in Place permanent exhibit at the center includes displays related to archaeology and to the ancient ones who called Pinellas County home, how they lived, and the tools they used. So plan a visit, participate in upcoming activities. For more information, go to www.weedonislandpreserve.org.